Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for all of the Synthesis materials in Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, some of these are going to be a major, major, major pain to actually get. However, I do just want to quickly mention, just remember, you can actually buy pretty much every type of shard, stone and gem from the Moogle shop once you actually complete their respective quest in the workshop. Uh, by that quest, I mean the collector's goals. So, for example, uh, unlock at least 20, well, get at least 20 sinister gems, and then you can buy sinister gems from the actual Moogle shop. Now, it's really, really important you focus on completing these before you actually go out and use the items in Synthesis. Simply due to the fact, some of these gems are a major, major, major pain to actually get more of. Specifically, I'm more thinking Lucid and Frost, but, well, let's not forget Blazing, actually, that's a good point. But, anyway, moving on, how do we get them all? Well, first things first, I'm not actually going to mention any specific worlds or mob types for some of these. Now, that is simply due to the fact that, speed-wise, bar none, the absolute best method of getting the vast majority of all materials is the battle gates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list of each individual material and tell you, well, if it's from a battle gate, which is the best one to farm, and if you can't get from a battle gate, where you can farm it instead. Now, keep in mind though that the ones that you can't get from battle gates are from very, very specific areas. But we'll get more into that as we move along. So, let's start. So, the first one we're going to be looking at is the Blazing Shard. Now, really simple item. You more than likely can buy these from the shop at anyway. But it comes from Battlegate 1 if you do need to farm it for some odd reason. Uh, Blazing Stone. Again, uh, it comes from Battlegate 1. You more than likely have quite a large amount of these. So, not really to worry there. The Blazing Gem, on the other hand, is a major, major pain. Now, for this one, I personally had to grind, and the only place I could find to get them is in Monstropolis. Now, I am going to put a link down in the description for the exact route I took to grind these. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's there if you need it, uh, so knock yourselves out with it. Blazing Crystal, uh, best way to get this is Battlegate number 12. That is bar none the fastest way. Um, also, let me just quickly mention, I am going to have a link down in the description for all Battlegate locations. So, you know, you guys can uh, just go ahead and farm them, just in case you don't know where they are. Now, all the Frost stuff, so Frost Shard, Frost Stone, Frost Gem, and Frost Crystal, they're a bit of a pain. You can get a couple of them from some of the battle gates. however, they are very, very, very rare. The best way I have found of farming them all actually comes from the very same monster, which is the dragon monster, well, the dragon type monster in Arondale. Now, what you want to do is teleport to the Crystal Palace, go through the small cave on your right, and make your way down the mountain to where two of them spawn. Again, I am going to have a link down in the description below with this exact route and farming method, just so you guys can see it in action. Now, Onto the lightning stuff. Now, lightning shard, the easiest way of getting this is from Battlegate 1, even though you more than likely have a massive surplus of these. Uh, other than that, we have lightning stone from Battlegate 4, lightning gem from Battlegate 4, and lightning crystal from Battlegate 4. So, as you can see, if you need lightning stuff, Battlegate 4 is the place to go. Now, onto some of the more important types we have Lucid. Now, Lucid Shard, again, you're more than likely going to have plenty of these, but if you need to farm it, then go to Battlegate number 7. Uh, same again with the Lucid Stone, Battlegate number 7 is the place to go. Now, for Lucid Gems, uh, like, there is literally no competition here. The best place for these is Battlegate 10. You will roll in them by doing that. As for Lucid Crystal, you can get the drop from Battlegate 10 as well, however, it is a little rare, so my advice would be to actually just farm the uh, other Lucid materials, farm some Wellspring Crystals, and then actually craft the crystal itself. Now, let's move on to Pulsing. So, Pulsing Shard and Pulsing Stone, even though you more than likely already have a massive surplus of these, you can get them both from Battlegate number 6. In terms of Pulsing Gems, however, I mean, 
this is again no competition it's battlegate number one it's above and beyond the fastest way i mean you you will literally be getting 10 plus gems per run of that battlegate so a very very easy and quick method of getting them now the pulsing crystal is a little bit finicky you can actually get as a drop from battlegate number 11 uh, however i really don't recommend that i simply suggest actually just farming the other pulsings as well as the uh, wellspring crystals and then literally just crafting the pulsing crystals because going out of your way to get them as a drop is a major pain typically you will only get one per battlegate run and even then that's not guaranteed so i really really don't like using the farming method for that whenever i need pulsing crystals i literally just go out and craft them basically now on to uh, riving stuff now the riving shard riving stone and the riving gem all come from the same battlegate battlegate zero now battlegate zero will have you rolling in these materials extremely extremely quickly because these come from the uh, basically like the shadow heartless enemies like uh, you know the uh, demon tower from the start of the game just think those little black critters like them they all drop the riving stuff but, however, the Riving Crystal does not come from Battlegate Zero. The Crystal actually comes from Battlegate number 12 in very, very large amounts. So, feel free to go and knock yourselves out with that one. Now, the Batweeks stuff is actually very, very simple. All of the Batweeks stuff is formed in Battlegate number 9. There is literally no competition for any of the materials compared to any other Battlegate. The best and the fastest drop rates for all of them is Battlegate number 9. Now, Twilight. Obviously, Twilight Crystals are used in Ultima Weapon and the Shard Stones and Gems are used in quite a lot of other uh, items as well. So, these are going to be sort of the high demand materials that you need to get. In terms of where they come from... You can get the Shard, Stone and Gem from Battlegate 9 in very large amounts. And the Crystal is... It's a little bit finicky. So, the Crystal can have a really high drop rate from Battlegate number 3. Uh, which is outside of the Twilight Town Mansion. Uh, however... You know, I mean, I've gone and gotten like 2 or 3 a run there. But then I've also gone like 5 runs without getting any. So, I would suggest... You know, like, if you are completely out and you need just one or two, I'd just go ahead and craft them, in all honesty. But, you know, if you if you want to build up a stack of them, then just go ahead and farm Battlegate number three. Now, following that, we move on to the Mithril stuff. Now, the Mithril stuff doesn't really have a huge amount of importance. And all this is pretty much formed from the uh, gummy ships in the asteroid field. So, Mithril Shard, you can get from the Starlight Way. Mithril Stone, you can get from the Starlight uh, Way as a rare drop from destroying the Asteroids or Blue Crystals. Or you can get it from the Misty Stream as a common drop. The Mithril Drem, however, is from the Misty Stream as a rare drop. Or the Eclipse as a somewhat common drop. Mithril Crystal comes from just the Eclipse as a slightly rare drop. Now, the Sinister stuff is rather unique as well, because the Sinister stuff doesn't come from any battle gates at all. There's also only one place in the entire game that you can farm these, and that is Monstropolis. Now, down below, I have a route uh, video. Well, there's going to be a video link in the description, which shows you the exact route that I took when farming all of these. It shows you exactly what enemies you need to kill, and the route takes about five minutes. You simply get to the end of the route, use the save point, walk back to the start, and you can just start all over again. So, yeah, if you need to farm sinister stuff, then check the link down below, and that will have the guide there for you. Now, on to soothing. Soothing is really, really, really straightforward. Chances are you... Like, you're probably rolling in all of these. Maybe you're lacking a few crystals, but that's all. Now, all the soothing stuff, including the crystals, is best formed in Battlegate number 10. Okay, on to Wellspring. Now, Wellsprings are very, very important for a lot of things, especially the Wellspring crystals. Wellspring crystals are used in quite literally every crystal that you craft and also pretty much every single high-end item as well as a lot of middle tier items as well 
it's no joke to say the Wellspring Crystal is going to be the item that you need the most of. Now, in terms of the Shard, Stone and Gems, the best place to farm these is with all the soothing stuff in Battle Gator number 10. If you want the Crystal, it's no like no competition again. Wellspring Crystals come from Battle Gate number 12. A single run will last about a minute and you'll end up with between 5 and 8 Crystals per run. So, again, you know, it's no competition. Do Battlegate 12 for Wellspring Crystals. Okay, now we're on to the really irritating ones. So, the Hungry Shard is something that you'll probably unlock in the shop just by playing the game casually. Um, but if you do need to farm it, then go to Battlegate number 3. The Hungry Stone, again... You're more than likely going to unlock this in the shop just by playing the game normally. But if you do need to farm it, then just go ahead and do Battlegate number 6. Right, the Hungry Gem. The Hungry Gem, I'm not going to lie, is a colossal pain in the arse. Now, you do get 8 from completing the uh, Workshop Collector goals. Um, other than that, you need to find the other 12 from other places. Uh, you can find a couple in jet, like chests and things like that. However, they don't come from any battle gates. And I've literally spent the past 12 hours going through the entire game again, killing almost every single monster I could find. And so far, I have found literally one monster that will drop this, even remotely. And that monster is the exact same one that you're going to farm for the frost, star, uh, the frost stuff which is going to be in a Rondale. Now, again, I will have a link down below in the description for that exact monster, which you can follow for the Hungry Gem as well. The part that you need to kill for the Hungry Gem drop is actually the tail on the dragon monster. It is only the tail that can drop the gem. The downside is it can also drop the stone and the crystal. So you're going to be having a bit of a tough time getting the Hungry Gem. What I suggest doing is not using any of them until you get 20 so you can actually just buy them from the shop this is the one i like this is the one material that i'm just going to straight up suggest don't farm for it just unlock it in the shop and just buy it because it's much easier to farm money than it is to farm these damn gems okay moving on to the hungry crystal hungry crystal you're more than likely going to get a big stack of while you're farming wellspring crystals because they come from battlegate number 12 as well Okay, on to the other stuff like Fluorite and Damascus. Now, these last couple of items are used to upgrade your Keyblade in the uh, Keyblade Forge. Now, Fluorite, the easiest way of getting that is in the Starlight Way by destroying the Asteroids and Blue Crystals. Damascus is a rare drop in Starlight Way, but a common drop in Misty Stream. Adamantite is a rare drop in Misty Stream, but a common drop in the Eclipse. And finally, you can also get Orichalcum and Electrum from the Eclipse as well, all by destroying the Asteroids and Blue Crystals. Finally, the Everescent Crystal and the Illusory Crystal are actually drops from completing Battle Gates. Those are used in Mickey and Donald's Ultimate Weapons, as well as a couple of armors. But guys, there you have it. That is how you can get all 78 Synthesis Materials. But that's where I'm going to end this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I really hope it helped. If it did, then leave a comment and a like. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.